When working on large pipelines in Foundry, oftentimes several users or teams are working together on the pipeline in order to deliver data to downstream consumers. When these downstream consumers depend on several data lineages to do their operational workflows, schedules can provide us a way to separate the ownership of each data lineage. Specifically, connecting builds allow us a way to define input, trigger, and target data sets within a data lineage. In this video, we'll be learning the difference between full builds and connecting builds and understanding how to use schedules in order to separate data ownership within our pipelines. Let's get started. So the pipeline we're looking at now is the same one we've been looking at previously, where upstream flight data is cleaned and enriched to produce the downstream aviation ontology. Specifically, we want to update this delay object here. And to do that, we need to update its backing data set delays. If we click on our data set and then hover over to the schedules tab, we can then see the schedules which build this data set. Let's open our flight delay schedule. With the schedule selected, if we zoom out, we can see the data lineage of the build associated with the schedule. As you may remember, we configured the schedule to be a full build, meaning that all upstream data sets will be built for the target data set. Let's go ahead and edit our schedule and update the build. Our build is currently configured to build all of the upstream data sets meaning that we have configured a full build on our schedule. Let's switch to a connecting build. We'll see now that the lineage re-renders in order to show us input data sets, target data sets, and trigger data sets. Let's use the connecting build to split up our pipeline. If we zoom in here, we see that this part of the pipeline produces the enriched flights data set. We want this data set to be the input of our connecting build. To do this, we select the data set and then set it as an input. This configures the schedule to only build everything that is between the input and the target data set. If we zoom out and look at our new data lineage, this is shown and rendered. Now, the build of our delays data set is only concerned with the input of the flights data set. In order to keep our delays up to date, we also want to trigger these builds whenever there is new data to the flights data set. This means we need to set it as a trigger. We can do this by hovering over to the data set, selecting it, and clicking the trigger button. Now, the data set has been updated to be an input trigger data set. So our delay schedule will now run whenever there is new data to the flights data set. Let's go ahead and save it. For this pipeline to then work end to end, we also need to make sure that someone is making sure that the enriched flights data set is being updated. Let's set up a new schedule for that data set. To do this, we select the flights data set, and then go ahead and click Create in order to create our new schedule. Now we see that the data set is set as a target. Let's go ahead and give our schedule a good name. Because we've divided up the data ownership in our pipeline, this schedule can be set up to build in whatever configuration we want. For this use case, we're going to go ahead and set it to be a full build. Then. We can also scroll down to the when to build section in order to have the data set build at a specific cadence. Let's go ahead and set it to build every day. If we zoom out, we can then see that the data lineage of the schedule has been rendered. Let's go ahead and save it. With the schedules tab open, we can now zoom out on our pipeline and get an overview of which schedules build the data sets in the pipeline. By hovering over each schedule, we see which data sets it builds. The flight schedule builds the flights data set, and Flight Delays builds the Delays dataset, separating data ownership in our pipeline.